Praise the Lord and God bless you. Welcome again to 10 Minute Midday Manor. 10 minutes in the Word of God to bless your lunch hour. Amen. We thank God for you being with us today as we continue our look in the book of 1 John with chapter number 2. Amen. We thank God for you being with us and we're going to look at that coming right up. Amen. God bless you on the day. We thank God for you and appreciate you being with us uh, today. We glorify God for all his grace and mercy and his love. And we thank God for you being with us on today. Amen. God is good as his mercy endures forever. Amen. Do us a favor. Help us out by subscribing or liking, commenting on this video, interacting with the video. Amen. To help us and help spread the gospel and spread the word of God. That is a man from uh, the Holy Scriptures. Amen. We thank God for you being with us on today and we pray that something is said or done and uh, praying that this is share worthy, that you will share this uh, video with someone that needs the word of God. Let us look in first John chapter number two as it reads, my little children, I'm writing these things so that you may not sin, but if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And by this, we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commandments. Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, in him truly the love of God is perfected. By this, we may know that we are in him. Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. Beloved, I'm writing you no new commandment, but an old commandment that you have had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word that you have heard. At the same time, it is a new commandment that I'm writing you, which is true in him and in you. Because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. Whoever says he is in the light and hates his brother is still in darkness. Whoever loves his brother abides in the light, and in him there is no cause for stumbling. But whoever hates his brother is in the darkness and walks in the darkness, and does not know where he is going, because the darkness has blinded his eyes. I am writing to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven for his name's sake. I am writing to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I am writing to you, young men, because you have overcome the evil one. I write to you, children, because you know the Father. I write to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abides in you, and you have overcome the evil one. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and the pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. And the world is passing away along with its desires, but whoever does the will of God abides forever. Children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard, the Antichrist is coming. So now many Antichrists have come. Therefore, we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that it might become plain that they all are not of us. But you have been anointed by the Holy One, and you all have knowledge. I write to you, not because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and because no lie is of the truth. Who is the liar but the one who denies that Jesus is the Christ? This is the Antichrist, he who denies the Father and the Son. No one who denies the Son has the Father. Whoever confesses the Son has the Father also. Let what you heard from the beginning abide in you, if what... You heard from the beginning abides in you, then you too will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that, that he made to us, eternal life. I write these things to you about those who are trying to deceive you. But the anointing that you receive from him abides in you, and you have no need that anyone should teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about everything, and is true, and is no lie, just as it has taught you, abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him so that when he appears, we may have confidence and not shrink from him in shame at his coming. 
you know that he is righteous, you may be sure that everyone who practices righteousness has been born of him. Amen. A lot of to unpack in here, and I'm pretty sure in 10 minutes or the five minutes I have left, I won't do it justice. But uh, again, John is dealing with people who were part of the fold but left, and they were denying the very fact that Jesus Christ was God manifest in the flesh. And so and they said he was part of spirit body and this, and uh, even denying that Thomas touched him, denying the physicality of our Lord Jesus, even the flesh. Uh, but Jesus overcame sin while in the flesh. I'm adding that while, but he overcame sin in the flesh. So so he's writing to you, and you can hear how he's pouring out his heart. He says, children, I don't want you to sin. Fathers, uh, he goes on to talk about. He says, I got to hit this. He says he's the propitiation for our sins, meaning he is the substitute. He was the physical substitute for the sins of the whole world and so if you're going to love him you got to keep his commandments you can't say i know him and then just totally reject his words his commands his his order the things that he is taught we show that we love him by keeping his commandments uh and so if we say we're part of him we ought to walk in it we ought to talk in it we ought to act it out just as he uh uh just as he commanded us to do and so uh, he goes through again. Paul, uh, John does a lot with the light and dark. Uh, he says you got to walk in the light. Uh, darkness is passing away. The light of Christ has already shined. And so we have to walk in the light. And he gives an example that you can't say that you hate your brother and still be in the light. Because if you love your brother, you would be uh, in the light. You can't hate somebody that you see and love God who you cannot see. And so uh, running out of time, but he goes on pouring his heart out. He wants children to know that their sins are forgiven. He's the fathers. You know who uh, he is from the beginning. Young men, you have strength. Uh, you can overcome the evil one. Uh, children, you know the father. And so he's saying, I'm writing to you out of care, out of concern. I don't want you to get caught up in these things that are being taught and getting caught up in the things of the world. If you get caught up in the world and love the world, the love of the father is not in you. And he describes it as desires of the flesh, lusts and things that are innate, the desires of the eye, uh, the eyes, which is ambition, selfish ambition, trying to be better than other people and the pride of life, meaning uh, taking care of yourself more than anybody else, being prideful of who you are. It says that's not of the Father, but it's of the world. And all of that is going to pass away. And he equates it to the Antichrist coming, meaning what? Having desires, having uh, those um, characteristics that are different or, or against what the will of God is for you. And he said, so many people have come up. So he's circling back to who he's specifically dealing with in this letter. And that's those who have pulled people and are trying to uh, convince people to pull away from the gospel that they have. And so he says, these antichrists are coming that teach you things that are not of God and are antichrist. And so we see that this thing is starting to come and people are pulling people out of the church and into their own uh, beliefs and he said that lets you know that we're at the last hour and he says because if they were part of us they would have stayed with us they would have uh, continued with us but since they decide to rebel against our teaching and rebel against the uh, foe we know who they are and uh, that they are not of us and said uh, but you you are known it and you have the knowledge uh, you have the truth. He just said, I'm not here to write to you because you don't have the truth. Um, but he said, I'm writing to you because you do uh, have the truth. The people that say that Jesus is not the Christ, the Messiah, uh, who denies this, denies the Father uh, and the Son. And you can't have the Father without the Son. People claim to have a relationship with God. But they will not accept the son. But no, you have to accept the son in order to have a relationship with the father. And so people are trying to bypass the son and get to God. And that's not the way it is. And so you have to, if you believe in the son, you have the father 
also. And so we should have that mindset that if you, uh, if, if you, whatever you heard, he's saying here, let it abide in you. You will, if you let it abide in you, you will have the son and the father, uh, as well. And so, uh, he's, he says it plainly. I'm writing you this because of the people who are trying to deceive you. Um, and one main point I want to hit before we leave, he talks about you should have no teachers. Uh, he said the anointing teaches you. I don't mean that pastors, evangelists, prophets are not in order, but you got to understand you got to allow the spirit in you. What he's saying, the spirit in you is going to teach you. When you don't have a pastor, apostle, prophet, teacher, evangelist, when you don't have uh, any of those things, the spirit in you would, would lead you and guide you in all truth. It would teach you. Pastors just said, I didn't know what apostolic was. I didn't know what proper baptism was. But as I read and allowed the Holy Ghost to teach me, he led me to baptism, led me to this. And then somebody put a name to it, and then I, I followed on through. But it's the same thing. The Holy Ghost is there to teach you. And it will lead you where to go. And eventually you will get into maturity of having uh, those undergirding um, roles with you. The pastor, the prophet, the evangelist, the teacher, the apostle. Uh, and so those things will help undergird your belief. But they will witness to the spirit that is in you as well. And so people that try to dissuade you or pull you out uh won't be able to if you allow the spirit to be that confirming voice in your life and so that's just the point that he was saying amen i'm over my time i got to go um but we know that we're born of christ we follow in his wisdom following his deeds let's walk in the light not of darkness let's not be deceived by those who deny that the son that christ came in the flesh he was our propitiation meaning a substitute for our sins he was born, he bled, he died, he rose again, and now he is our Savior forevermore. God bless you today. I pray God's blessing upon you. As I always say, pray for you. I pray for you. Pray for me. Let's watch God change things, and let's walk in the truth and stay away from the darkness. Amen. We all have a journey to make. We all have strengths and weaknesses, but let's make sure that our one strength is that we're walking after the things of God. God bless you. Have a smile upon you is my prayer in Jesus' name.